Welcome back to Pace Immigration, talking with immigration lawyer Andy Samachuk. Andy, Canadian Immigration Roundup. Right. If it's a, if it's a new day, then there's new changes. Correct. In Canadian Immigration, it seems, when you open the papers. Uh, what do you got? Well, uh, one thing that's come up is the electronic travel authorization, which requires people who have uh, intentions of coming to Canada to pre-register electronically by the internet, particularly people who are visa exempt. So, for example, Europeans coming from the EU to Canada or American green card holders who are not citizens. Citizens are exempt from the electronic travel authorization, ETA, but green card holders in the U.S. are not, so they have to register. Is this only for, this is people arriving by plane? Correct. Only okay. by plane at the moment. Later okay. on, it's going to also involve traffic uh, on the ground okay. but it, or on the sea. Right. But at the moment, it's only uh, airplane traffic. Okay. But anyway, just something to note, if you are either a green, collar, green card holder in the United States or coming in from Europe, or even if you have just a work permit in Canada and you're going to be flying in, you're going to have to register with the authorities there under this so-called ETA system. Is this every flight? Yeah. Every, every flight. flight. So it's not like a one time only and then you're free to go. Oh, no, that. no. You register and you're good for five years. Okay. But you have to register one time. I understand. Yeah. Okay. What else you got? Okay. The second area that's of interest is uh, compliance. There's a heavy emphasis now in Canada on compliance. They're auditing uh, labor market impact assessment applicant employers mm -hmm. to see if they're complying with the approval notice that they got. So particularly uh, people who are reapplying to renew a work permit. Okay. They're sending in people to audit what's going on, and that's delaying the approval of the work permit. Give and us a, a real-world example. Let's say Acme hired Bob as a machinist. and right. So what would happen is at some stage they will notify the employer that they're coming in to do an audit, whether the employer has complied with the terms of the approval of the labor market impact assessment that was granted for Bob. Okay. And a guy would come into the workplace and review the paperwork to make sure the person is paid the prevailing wage, uh, you know, that all the conditions that were imposed on the on the worker uh, are, are being complied with, etc. So it used to kind of be, once Bob got the job, it was home free, you didn't have to worry about it for a while. Now they could show up in the middle of Bob's correct. tenure and take a look. Correct, correct. Okay. And this is also something that could come with respect to the NAFTA free trade professionals coming northbound into the uh, into Canada from the United States, where accountants, lawyers, engineers, uh, whatever, in their workplace could be audited. You know, the employers could be audited as to whether these people are being paid the proper amount and whether they're complying with the duties and uh, the really? things that are set out, yeah, when the application is made. Yeah, because NAFTA's kind of a, it's kind of gray area mixed in with this LMIA Correct. stuff, isn't it? Yeah, you know? what it's what's very interesting about it is that Service Canada is enforcing the NAFTA provisions, and I'm not exactly sure how that uh, that squares with the jurisdiction, but that's the way they're doing it. So okay. uh, who knows? We'll have to watch how that develops. This is all coming into effect when? It's now, in effect now. Man. All of this is in effect now. They move fast. Yes, they do. <laughs> One last thing <laughs> okay, is uh, the Citizenship Act has changed the time period that a person has to be in Canada in order to qualify for citizenship. It used to be three out of the last four years you had to be in Canada to qualify. Now it's four out of the last six years. So you have to show four years of physical presence in Canada over the last six years and not less than six months in any particular year uh, of physical presence. So uh, there's quite a, an attachment to Canada now required. And in addition, an, uh, you have to exhibit an intention of wanting to be a Canadian in order to get the citizenship. So basically, they don't want passport shoppers. Correct. I guess. Yeah. Okay, so citizenship requires four years of residence out of six in Canada. And how do people prove that? Because they don't just take your word for it, do they? No, they don't. But let's say you're employed or let's say you're going to school or let's say you're visiting doctors or let's say you're using your credit card and you've got credit card statements. These are all ways of showing it. Okay, great. Yeah. Uh, thanks a lot, Andy. We'll talk to you next time. Andy Semichuk at PaceLawFirm.com. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye.